this is Christian. In this video, we're going to write a tiny Python program to print the barcode of a five digit zip code to the console. So here is the instructions. So here is a uh, example of the barcode you will see on the US mailing uh, system. And this barcode, if you break it down to the own uh, digits, you'll see it rep is uh, represented down here. All right, so the first barcode, well, this line here, called this is the um, full bar. The first one and the last one here are known as the frame bars. So when you print it out, you always print the uh, frame bars from the beginning and at the end. Okay, so in between is a set of five bars, either full bar, half bar, or a combination thereof, that will um, encode a, a digit. So here's the first digit, second digit, third, fourth, and fifth. So this doesn't mean represent a digit one, it just means the first digit. These digits are exactly what this digit will be uh, encoded with, right? So nine represents these five bars here, and then five represents this, and so on. So the sixth digit is what's called a check digit. This check digit is uh, calculated by adding all the numbers of these five digits. So if you, if you add nine plus five plus zero, plus one plus four, you're going to get 19. And the idea to get this check digit is basically um, you you check at this number. If it's not a multiple of 10, right, not a multiple of 10, then what you do is you subtract this number from the next largest uh, multiple of 10. So in this case, um, as you can see, it's, or it's between 10 and 20. So then what you do is you subtract 20 f um, into a 19 or you subtract 19 from 20, rather, to get a number of 1. And this difference, or this number, is what's called the check digit. And there are a couple of ways to do this as well. There's an easier way, and there's also a long way um, to do that. But we'll do the shortcuts. You can see how easy you can get this number here. Okay, just remember it's a multiple 10, right? All right, and then down here, you, uh, we're going to see a chart. Now, this chart is already, you know, uh, calculated, created, so you don't have to do anything else. But how to get this chart is explained down here. So you're not going to um, do any uh, calculation using these weights at all. It's already been done for you. So if you look at these digits in the first column, these are the actual numbers, right, from a 1 to 9 and then including 0. Um, the reason why I put 0 on the bottom here is because if you look at these numbers, like 0, 0, 0, you start with 0, 0, 0, 0, and then the largest is down here. That's why it's placed down here. But really, so for example, at the zip code number, uh, 95014. So if you look at number 9, here's 9, it has this 5 bars right here. So the number 1, as stated here, represents a full bar. Then a 0 is a half bar. So you get full bar, half bar, full bar, half bar, half bar. And if you look at this, you see down here. So here is the, the first bar is the frame bar. And the number 9 represents here, right? So it's a full bar, half bar, full bar, half bar, half bar. So that's nine. And then five is the next one. You see that half, full, half, full, half. And that's half, full, half, full, half, and so on. You go all the way to the ninth, uh, fourth digit. The last digit is the check digit, and then you put your frame bar at the end, okay? And then um, I'm here to ask you to use these five functions. I mean, four functions, rather. Of course, you can add more if you need to, but at least have these functions in here. The main function, the get digit is to read the five digit zip code, and then the print digit that will receive a parameter called D for each single digit, and you get to print that out using the barcode and the barcode representation, and then the function print barcode will you pass the entire zip code to it, and it will print the entire zip code. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's see how this is done. Now I'm gonna uh, already copy this, you know, um, functions over to a file, and also I created the representation, um, the barcode representation for each of these digits already. So let's go to the IDE and see how that looks. What that looks like here in the IDE, I created a file called postalbarcode.py, and I copied over the uh, functions that we're gonna uh, create or implement. And also put here in the global constants um, some of these numbers in their encoded uh, representation, right? So I put one one zero 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 
the one is the full bar, zero is the half bar, right? I'm, I'm doing this way versus uh, something like this. Um, you know, full bar, full bar, half bar, half bar, half bar, right? Uh, you can do this if you want. Um, if you do this way, then you basically save yourself a step. You don't have to convert each of these numbers, but um, it's I guess it's a little bit less fun. <laughs> and also, if you make changes in the future, let's say that, okay, we have a different system now and numbers have now changed, you can always still come back and change this to a full bar, half bar, as someplace else, or you can use this binary num this numbers here. It looks like binary numbers, and um, I'll prefer this way because now if you look at this, this is more portable, right? If you happen to uh, reuse this file again, then you can just basically export this out to another module, and these numbers, because they are digits, they're uh, you know more flexible and more portable than these um, you know uh, very too specific barcode. So I'll use the numbers in here. I'll do another loop to loop through each of this digit, and we'll convert by using either the full bar, <coughs> excuse me, full bar or half bar, right? Okay, so let's go down here and um, start a program. So the first thing is down the very bottom is just to make sure we have a note to say program starts here. I just put that note here so I know what, what happens. And just make sure you always invoke the main method down there, okay? All right, so what happens when you run the program? So you're going to go to the main function. The first thing you need to do is you need to get the digit. So this function will do exactly that. So the first step is we're going to set a variable called zip code. And this can be assigned to that get digit function. And this function does not re receive any parameters. So we're just going to leave that. And once we get the digit, then after that was the next step. We're going to pass that digit zip code to this print barcode function. So here then, we're just going to say print the barcode. We pass that to it. And if you look at this main function, that's all there is to it, right? Very short. Of course, you can do the calculation first, um, and then you, you pass that over. But, you know, why do here? Your main function is supposed to be very um, short and sweet and, and um, very uh, kind of generic. Okay, so let's look at this function first, the get digit, up here. And this is, as you as you put a note here, is to basically read in the five digit. So you can say, um, you can just return right away. I'm not validating anything at all. If you are validating digits, make sure they are digits. Then, of course, you're going to have more statements. Um, but I'm going to do uh, just a simple statement. We'll assume that the digits are all numbers, okay? So I'm going to return the input. Um, I'll say enter a five a digit zip code. We enter the five digits of a code and we'll pass it uh, back, return it as a string to the zip code. So now this is a string and then we pass the string zip code to this function and then now we are now here. All right, so this is pretty much done, right? Very short like that. And let me, let me do this so we can have some more spaces. So now, what do we do in the print uh, barcode function? The idea is to print it out, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to print the um, the full bar. This is the frame bars at the beginning, and we want to remove the the um, line break. So add the end parameter and set that to empty string. This is the front bar uh, frame bar. We also need one for the end. So you can copy this, we can press the uh, Alt Control and down arrow to duplicate this line. And this is the end bar, end frame bar. So that's beginning the end. In between is where we actually print the five digit plus the check digit. So the first thing we need to do is we need to loop through this barcode. Every digit, we pass that to this function print digit to print it out, to print the encoded barcode, right? Uh, so here, We'll do a very simple loop. I use the full loop for every D or digit in the barcode, or zip code, sorry. We grab every digit and then we're going to pass that to the print digit function. Pass D to it. Okay, so here I put a note here. <clears throat> we can say I print um, each digit. 
And then once we get all those five digits printed, the next thing is here we need to print the uh, check digit. Well, in order to print it, you have to calculate it first, right? So instead of calculating here, you want to send it off to another function. So I'll use another function to do the calculation. Then that function will return that check digit back to another variable. I will also just call it check digit is equal to the, um, I guess we'll call it a function called calculate check digit. I pass to that the actual zip code. I need the entire zip code to be to calculate it. And once I be, once I get that check digit back, then I can go ahead and print it out. So print again, print digit. I pass this check digit to the print digit function because it's in the a string character, right? So uh, this is the print barcode. Now we need to implement this each digit barcode, right? We need to print that out. Again, the function is to print, so that's exactly what we're going to do right in here. So we got the digit coming in. This is a single digit. What would, do we need to do? We need to get the representation of each of these numbers. If it's a zero, then we're going to return this or print this out. If you already have it in this format, then you can just print it. Since I don't, I need to loop through each digit to make sure that it's properly encoded to using the four bar or half bar to get something like this before I print it out. Okay, so I'm going to do something like this in the print digit. So you have to do something like if, if the D is indeed a zero, if it's like that, then you need to loop through the zero uh, constant, right? So you can say for um, every digit in the zero, and then I need to check if the digit is indeed a uh, if it's a if it's a zero, right? Then I need to print the half bar. Else, it must be a one. Print the full bar. Okay, you print that out, and uh, that's it, right? <clears throat> half bar, print half bar, full bar, and you print that out. But when you print it out, you need also to make sure you have the encode. The end is equal to blank, and then same thing here. Okay, so this is only for if it's a zero. <clears throat> or a one. I mean, all of this is for one digit. So that means I would end up having something like this. Um, oops, if it looks like elif, it's a, it's a one, then you do the whole thing again and again. You see that it's very cumbersome. It does take a lot of code. When you see repetition in your code like this, you break it into a function, right? So you don't have to do this because you can pass in the digit to another function and that function can do the uh, conversion for you, do the conversion for you, and then you, you return it back and then just uh, print that out, all right? So you don't have to, um, you know, uh, do this for every zero or one or two. So I would say that I might need this. I just need one conversion. And then, so I don't need this part here. But I'm going to get the digit, the digit coming in. Instead of you doing this way, 0, 1, 2, 3, you can get another function to return that digit. So you would do something like maybe um, I call it a code digit. Uh, digits, I mean all the, the five digits in, in uh, these up here. I'll return the correct one. So I will assign that to a function, maybe I say get code um, digits. I pass to this code digit, the actual digit is I receive. Okay? And then you return back either is there 0 through 9, one of those. And then you can just check it right here once. So you can say if, um, yeah, you, you don't need this anymore. So I need this one here. I still need that over here. So I can check each digit in the coded digits here. If it's a 0, then you print this half bar. If it's a one, you print the full bar. You can do that for one at a time if you want, or you can build the barcode first. So you don't have to print each uh, each one at a time. 
you build a barcode. So you could do something like this. You could say barcode equals to empty string first. And if it's a zero, then you want to say uh, barcode plus equal the half bar, right? Else the barcode is equal the, you add the full bar. So I'll build the barcode here. Once I'm done, then I print it only once down here. So print the barcode. And again, you put the end uh, character with the, with the empty string. All right, so that's probably the way I want to do it, okay? And then now we need to uh, calculate this function, get the digits, so we can return it back here. So I will probably write another function up here. I put here called, um, uh, what do we what do we want to call this? Um, I guess we're going to get a, get uh, the barcode um, representation for a digit. Okay, we're going to get one of these up here, I'm, I'm trying to say. So here if we do a, we define a function called get code digits. Or, receive the actual digit, okay, the digit here, which is D. Um, you can call it D2 if you want, it doesn't matter. And then we'll do the if and else in here, or the if block. So say if the digit is a zero, then we're going to just return the zero back, okay? And if you want to build, you know, have a variable like this, you know, D is equal to something, and then if, if it's zero, you can say d is equal to zero, like this first. And in the end, at the end, you'll return, you know, d, right? That's fine. You have to do that for uh, all those 10 numbers. Or you just return it right away, like I just did. And then you don't have to do the last one here, right? So, and also you don't need this extra variable. That means I'm going to do this for all those nine digits. So again, control alt. Uh, copy this like ten, nine times. Let's see, it might have too many, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this is too many. All right, so this will be nine, eight, nine, Okay, so I return my statements, <clears throat> and all my statements return the actual numbers uh, representation to this variable called digits, and then I loop through every digit and do the conversion here, build my barcode, and then print it out. So again, print digit, you print the digit right here, although you have to do a little bit of calculation here. Okay, so that part is done. Now down here, when we do the check digit, so we have to write another function to check the digit. So let me copy this so I don't have to type it. I'll make sure I type it correctly. I'll put it right above here. And definition of function called that. I'll put here, I'll just say um, calculate the check digit. Okay. So we need to loop through each digit and you add them up. That's all. So you have a sum. Initially it was set to zero. And for each uh, d digit in the zip code, we're going to add that to the sum. And so digit, but you want to convert that to a number first, integer. So you add all the numbers. Now you get the sum. And now you need to return that uh, single digit back, right? If it's a multiple of 10, then you'll return 0. If it's not a multiple of 10, you need to subtract that number from the next largest multiple number of uh, 10. And this has a lot of, uh, I mean, there's a, a couple of ways to do this. This is a long way, and also, also there's a short way. So, well, first of all, we're going to check to see if the uh, sum, right, is divisible by 10, which is a multiple of 10. If that is, is a 0, 
then we will just basically return um, zero back. We can just do that, right? Is zero, then we, the check digit is indeed zero. And otherwise, if it's not, then it must be uh, differently, right? It must be a, a different. So therefore, we're going to say um, if it's if it's not zero, there must be, you know, other ones. So we can say then the the check digit is going to be um, um, so I put it for now. I put a check digit is going to be equal to. I'll do the shortcut, right? So for example, if it's a ten and and do over here. So if it's like a nineteen, right? To check the check digit, you have to do a twenty subtract nineteen. But how do we know that it's between ten and twenty? Well, you have to. You can check the sum, right? If the sum is is less, um, you know, greater or equal to ten. I mean, greater than ten, and less than or equal to twenty, then we'll subtract twenty from, you know, this sum to get the digit. If it's between twenty and thirty, you subtract thirty from that. That's a hard way. The short way is again, it's a multiple of ten. So all you have to do is grab the last digit and then subtract ten from that, right? So if I do this, I get nine, and then it's a multiple of ten. So just ten minus nine, I get one. That's the logic here. So what I'm doing is basically ten minus the sum, and use the modulus of ten, whatever the number is, subtract that from that, and I get my digit. And once I do that, I'm done. Then and then here I can return the check digit here. And that's it for this one, right? And um, <clears throat> So it should be it should be correct, and of course, if you don't want to create a variable, you could just say return that, and that's fine too. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna leave it like this. And this is just one way. You could also create a variable called digit up here, and you say digit is zero, otherwise digit equals this number, and you return digit down here. Either way, again, there's a lot of ways to do it. But as long as you have a return statement here, then you should be fine. Okay, so I'll save that. And um, let's see, did we miss anything else? I think that's pretty much it. If you do. So we get the zip code, we get the zip code, we pass to the print bar, bar code, we print the full bar at the beginning, we print the full bar at the end, that's us already saved. Then for each digit, we're going to print the digit. We go into the print digit function, way up here. Okay, we get the encoded uh, numbers uh, up here, one of these. And for each digit, we're going to build the barcode first, and we're going to build a half bar or full bar. We print that out for each digit. We do that five times, right? Five times here. After that, we print the, the check digit. We do the calculation. We pass the entire zip code to that check digit function. Uh, calculate digit check. Um, calculate check digit function. We did the summation here. We turn either zero or the um, check digit, return that here, print it out. Okay, one thing you want to be careful here is as you trace this, so in a way I'm tracing my code here, when I pass this digit to the print digit function, right, it goes in here, and then when I get the code digit, remember it's a digit, it's checked as a string, so that check digit must be in a string format in order for this to work, right? So that means when I return my check digit, I either return as a string, or I have to convert this to a string right down here. So either way you do it, that's fine. So in my case, I will do it here. I will just say return a zero as a string, or return the string representation, convert that to a string of that digit. And so now I don't have to worry about you know conversion out here. You print the digit out, print the code, you end, and we're done. So let's save this and see if uh, this is correct. I'm going to run it. And uh, I'm going to enter the uh, digit we have in the uh, notes over here. It's a uh, 95014. Okay, 95014. And let's go back and paste it right in here. All right, so here's the barcode. Let's copy this and bring it back to the document. We'll compare to see if it's the same as that or not. And there it is. It looks pretty identical to me, right? So it works perfectly fine. 
and we can check another digit just to make sure another example so let's say that we do it again and we're going to enter um you know five four three two one okay so we can compare right in here so at five this is the frame bar so five is half full half full half so five is half full half full half and then four is you know this part here four is half full half half full looks good and then this is the a uh, three a half half full full half and then two is um half half full half full and then one is half 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 full full and then here is the check digit is it correct or not well, if you add 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, you're going to get um, 15, right? Yeah, get 15 and subtract uh, 10, subtract 5, you're going to get a 5. So the uh, check digit is a 5. And 5 is half full, half full, half. Half full, half full, half in the frame here. And there it is. So it looks great. Um, so this is one way to solve this problem. I'll show you in another, another sort of video. Well, I can refactor this a little bit to show you another way to tackle this problem in a different way. So let me know if you have questions. Thank you.